far as some religions go? I know typically no, but a little bit maybe? Well, actually, um, I I think we'll find that most people who self-identify as belonging to one of the classic religious traditions, whether it's a Christian tradition, Islam, uh, Hinduism, or Buddhism, um, the average believer is far more open and accepting of the possibility that we have neighbors in space uh, than um, the media assumes and uh, that uh, the average scientist assumes. I actually ran a survey on this and asked people, and uh, the survey showed that, oh, yes, there is a small fraction, less than 8%, within each of these religious traditions where people say, oh, no, if it's true that we have space neighbors, my faith will face a crisis. But the overwhelming majority, we're talking pushing 90% now, of uh, Catholics and Orthodox and various kinds mm-hmm. of Protestants as well as Buddhists, um, are going to say, you know what? I'll have a space a spaceman <laughs> sitting next to a pew any Sunday. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, that 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 number is divided in half, uh, with uh, some saying, well, they're not really too sure; they don't expect a problem. And then the other half uh, saying again and again, Earth is so small and so marginal, and God is so great. Uh, we cannot imagine a universe of this size without God having other creatures somewhere else. So that that seems to be the dominant point of view. It's not exhaustive, but it's dominant. And and the the dominant point of view also has a little bit of fear associated with it because I I know that I'm okay. So I'm I I your cousin in another life because I walk that dichotomy as well. I was raised by my mother as a devout Roman Catholic and my father believed in UFOs. So I have a complete split down the middle of me of very traditional beliefs and very out there concepts that, you know, I I choose to talk with certain people with. (laughs) So um, the belief of, Intelligent life out there is something that I have felt and known forever. And the fact that we're, we find out the many different concepts and ideas and beliefs and theories that are out there in intelligent life, the, the, many people's fears come from the fact of their limited view of what they believe UFOs or ETs are. So they have this visual that creates fear. And I believe that if they can get beyond the visual and actually go into the aspect of uh, soul or heart or or consciousness or intelligence or awareness, it would diminish some of this fear. And you'd even have that 8% that's a little bit wishy-washy kind of becoming more (laughs) open-minded. Now, what what you're calling the visual, um, I think I would associate with science fiction, especially movies uh, that uh, depict the aliens as a military enemy, diabolical enemy, uh, in a way that looks like the Soviet Union back in the days of the uh, the Cold War. Exactly. Um, those people who have had UFO experiences or those who really um, are devoted to the UFO phenomenon uh, tend not to think that way. They, they don't think of aliens as, uh, as an invading military force. They, they, they rather think of them as beneficent, as, uh, as those who are more advanced in science and technology and even morality and spirituality than we are. And uh, we could only benefit from uh, contact. So I, I like to draw a sharp line between the science fiction on the one hand and then those who are sort of authentically um, uh, you know, embracing the UFO phenomenon on the other Right. Okay, great. Now, would you lend us a little insight and wisdom in regard to 
the topic of aliens and angels, the the belief that some of our visions or our stories throughout the Bible of angels actually extraterrestrials? I think uh, it, it, it sort of makes logical sense for us to uh, take a look at these ancient uh, reports of angelic visitation and occasionally the angels have wings, uh, which mm-hmm. I think... Uh, uh, the wings are kind of a shamanic, um, uh, having to do with shamans, a symbolism that they fly to heaven and uh, they learn the secrets of heaven and then they come back. Uh, so I think there's a, a certain uh, generic symbolism going on back in the ancient world. And then uh, we today, especially after World War II, for some reason or another, are far more secular. We We don't want to believe in supernatural things, but science and technology do all these marvelous things. So I think it's kind of a natural uh, for the ancient astronaut theorists to try to re-explain ancient uh, angels in terms of um, visitors from uh, outer space. And because technology is so marvelous, uh, we think, well, maybe these these uh, flying saucers and the UFO knots who are in them, maybe they're technological angels so in some ways uh what's happening in the ufo phenomenon is that the duties of the angels are take being taken over uh today now could it possibly be that um in ancient israel when a prophet got called by god and an angel came to visit or when uh mary the mother of jesus was visited by gabriel uh, mm-hmm. Could this be a visitor from another planet? Well, let me just say, I think it's reasonable to ask that question. I'm a little bit reluctant to just take modern technology as a bulldozer and just ride roughshod over those um, ancient uh, uh, scriptures that way. But as, as I say, I think it's a, it's a reasonable question. And uh, then one could actually turn it around and say, well, maybe... Maybe these space aliens who are visiting us are actually angels who are in disguise as astronauts. <laughs> and and so there could be like a a level of intelligences or awarenesses or extraterrestrials then, perhaps. Yes, and um, I think that one of the curious things about the UFO uh, phenomenon today is that many people, uh, Lisa, and I'm sure you've talked with them, um, have experiences with aliens that look a lot like angels. They'll say, well, um, this alien is talking to me in my mind, and uh, uh, I've got a telepathic connection or or Mm -hmm. something of the particular nature so uh you know you're not um uh talking with an alien in a spacesuit and having trouble translating what they're saying no no there's a kind of spiritual connection and uh, that cannot be described in terms of science and technology and and so i think there may be um at that level uh more of a connection between what people are reporting today and and angelic uh, visions, you know, uh, 2,500 years right. ago. I love, I love uh, when uh, people like you are bringing science and religion together because I, I, it kind of um, solidifies uh, belief, theory, and, and actual result. And I really like that, that whole proof shall i say even though we're supposed to believe in the soul there's that proof that validates you know, it yes <laughs> um I, now, I hesitate to use the word proof but i use the word consonants i think that there's a consonant okay. relationship with most of science and most of what uh biblical believers uh want to have i think it's it's consonants not proof but you know that's good right. enough Okay, I got gotcha. you. Now, you talk about, and this is something that's that's a, a really um, controversial but intriguing uh, topic. I love this topic. Talk to me about the Hopkins theory regarding hybrids. 
Um, you talk a lot about the different types, and I just really want to get into the hybrid aspect because that seems to be something that's like starting to be talked about a little bit more right now. Uh, that uh, turned out to be a real uh, puzzle for me. And so in the book, I tried to walk the reader through how do we understand these reports where a person will say they were abducted from their bedroom, taken through the ceiling, and then um, finding themselves aboard a spacecraft, uh, usually women, but there are some men who report this as well, and uh, they're examined by the gray aliens, um, uh, examined as a doctor would examine you on a, on a table, and uh, lots of activity having to do with the genitary and impregnation and the birth of hybrid babies, and then sometimes the mother is invited to the spaceship later to cuddle and love the baby while the aliens watch it. I mean, these are just uh, stories that, that, that bother your mind. And Bud Hopkins, along with Whitney uh, Strieber and uh, John Mack um, and David Jacobs, all 